Solving systems of equations with substitution is a method that involves solving one equation for one variable and then substituting that expression into the other equation. This allows you to reduce the system to a single equation with a single variable, making it easier to find the values of the variables one at a time. It's particularly useful when one equation can be easily rearranged to express one variable in terms of the other. Before we start solving systems of equations with substitution, let's practice writing a system. We're going to let x be the first number, and y is the second number. And we're not going to solve this one. All right, the sum of two numbers is 48. An equation for that would be, well, the first number plus the second number equals 48. The keywords here were sum, because that means we add the two numbers. So we have our first number and our second number is 48, so that's equals 48. Moving on, the second number is nine more than twice the first number. So the second number is, well, the second number is y is equals. The second number is nine more than twice the first number. So we're going to add nine to two times the first number. So two times the first number plus nine. Nine more than twice the first number. And here's our system of equations. We're going to solve this system of equations and write the answer as an ordered pair. Now, this is the first case where both equations say y equals. In this case, we'll be using a method called substitution. But basically, since both of these expressions on the right equal y, we'll set these expressions equal to each other. So we'll start by saying 6x plus 20 equals negative 3x plus 2. Both of these expressions equal y, so we can say the expressions equal each other. All right, we'll use inverse operations now to solve for x. Notice we went from having two equations with two variables to one equation with one variable. All right, so we'll start by moving the x's to the left by adding 3x to both sides of the equal sign. And we'll move the constants over to the right by subtracting 20 from both sides. So that leaves us with 9x equals negative 18. Dividing both sides by 9, we get x equals negative 2. So far, so good, but we're only half done because we've solved for x, but we also need to solve for y. So we're solving for both variables. So we can actually take this value for x and substitute it back into either equation for x. So we could substitute it there in the first equation for x or in the second equation for x. The first equation does not have a negative sign, so let's go ahead and use that one. We'll get the same answer either way. So we have y equals 6 times whatever x is plus 20. And we'll just work out the right side. y equals negative 12 plus 20, or y equals 8. All there is left to do now is write our answer as an ordered pair. So that would be x and y. So our solution to this system is the ordered pair negative 2, 8. We're going to graph this system equations with substitution also. This is uh, a little different. Notice that only one of these equations says y equals. In the first example, both equations said y equals. So this version of substitution will look a little different. We're going to take, to take this expression that equals y, and we're going to substitute it into the other equation for y. So we're going to replace the y in the first equation with this expression that equals y. 
So if I'm rewriting the first equation as 4x minus 5 times this expression that equals y. So I substituted this expression for y. Then I'm still writing the first equation. It equals 8. All right, we'll start by carefully using the distributor property to get rid of these parentheses. I think the safest way to do that would be to change this minus 5 to a plus negative 5. And that will emphasize that we're really distributing a negative 5. All right, this 4x just tags along for now. Negative 5 times negative 2x is positive 10x. Negative 5 times positive 4 is negative 20. We have some like terms to combine on the left side of the equation, so we'll just combine those. And then use our inverse operations to solve for x. All right, so we have x equals 2. We've solved for one of the variables. We still need to solve for the other variable, though. All right, we can substitute this 2 in for x in either one of these equations, but it would be much easier in this case to substitute it into the second equation because we have an, exp an equation here that says y equals. So we'll just say y equals negative 2 times whatever x equals, it equals 2, plus 4. So I just rewrote this second equation, but I substituted 2 for x. Just working out that math on the left side, negative 4 plus 4 equals 0. So our solution is the ordered pair 2, 0. All right, we have a, uh, a special case here. We're going to end up with infinitely many solutions. So let's go ahead and uh, see how that works out. So here we have an equation that says x equals. And that's fine. I could say y equals or x equals. So that means we're going to substitute this expression that equals x into the second equation for the x. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the second equation, but instead of writing x, I'm going to write negative 5y minus 3. All right, once again, we will carefully distribute that negative 3. I'm going to remind myself that it's a negative 3 by adding the opposite. Negative 15y just tags along for now. And negative 3 times negative 5y, well, that's positive 15y. And negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. That equals 9. All right, when we combine left terms on the left side here, let's see those y's cancel out. So we're left with an expression or an equation that says 9 equals 9. Well, that's always true. So what that means is that we have infinitely many solutions. So when you run into this situation, you can just stop and say infinitely many solutions, or you might need to just type the infinity symbol if you're doing this on a computer. And we can also have this situation where the solution does not exist. Right, once again, we have the y equals y situation here. So both equations say y equals. So we'll go ahead and set these two expressions equal to each other, since they both equal y. So I have the first expression, negative 7x plus 6, equal to the second expression. We'll just kind of work our way here. We'll add 7x on both sides. And when we do that, we get 6 equals 5. Well, 6 never equals 5. So in this situation, there is no solution. Or we can just say the solution does not exist. Or if you're working this out on a computer, they might have you type in DNE for it does not exist. We can write systems of equations to model real-world scenarios. So let's read through this word problem here and see how systems of equations can help us. Max leaves Denver heading directly west at a rate of 31 miles per hour. 
Two and a half hours later, Cynthia leaves from Denver heading in the same direction at a rate of 37 miles per hour. Notice she's going faster. How long in hours after Cynthia leaves does Cynthia catch up with Max? Round your answer to the nearest hundredths place if necessary. Okay, let's start by creating some variables. Let's have x be the number of hours. And let's have y be the distance traveled. That'll be in miles. Okay, let's think about max. So his distance for the number of miles from Denver will equal, well, let's see, 31, which is his speed, multiplied by the number of hours. So y equals 31x. Now, Cynthia, she leaves two and a half hours later. So her distance is going to be her speed multiplied by x minus 2.5. So let's clarify that x is the number of hours for max. So Cynthia's hours is Max's hours minus 2.5, because she leaves 2.5 hours later. All right, so we have our two equations here. Let's go ahead and begin by getting rid of these parentheses so that we can get this equation in slope-intercept form. So I'll just distribute that 37. So Cynthia's equation is y equals 37x minus 92.5. On a calculator, 37 times 2.5 is 92.5. Now we have two equations that both say y equals. So we're going to set these expressions that equal y equal to each other. So I have 31x equals 37x minus 92.5. We'll solve for x, which remember is the number of hours that max has traveled. We'll do our inverse operations here. In hundredths place, we get 15.42 to round up from 15.41 to 15.42 because the number after the one that was here is a six so we'd round that up all right that's the number of hours that max has been traveling when cynthia catches up to him because we these we set these y's or the distances equal to each other so their distances are the same and that happens when max has been traveling for 15.42 hours but the question is, how long in hours after Cynthia leaves does Cynthia catch up with Max? The time that she travels is 2.5 hours less than the number of hours that Max has traveled. So we need to subtract 2.5 from this to get the answer to our question. So we'll work out 15.42 minus 2.5 on a calculator and get 12.92. So Cynthia catches up to Max after 12.92 hours. I hope these examples have been helpful. This is Mr. Ela signing off.